What's happening, y'all? Jason here with Echo Nesters. We're also known as the Adventure Nesters. And you might be looking around here, and some of you might be familiar with this, but up until just a few moments ago, I had no familiarity with what this thing was, what it could do, and what it was all about. How did it all start? We're here at CA Tuned Off-Road, and this is one of Max's new projects. And when I looked over, I said, what is that thing? I thought maybe he picked up a Defender or some sort of other, I don't even know, just a safari type vehicle. And I started looking at it and I picked up on the name and I was trying to pronounce it at first, but I believe it's Enios. And it's also known as the Grenadier. The one thing you might notice right off the bat is it definitely has that safari utilitarian look. But there are a lot of vehicles out there that tend to have that look, but don't have the capabilities, if you will. So right before the video, I kind of was walking around it out of curiosity, if you will. I noticed some things that kind of struck me very interesting and also drug me into uh, the possibility of saying, is this my next vehicle and is it worth it? So let's talk about this. This starts at about 93K right here as you see it set up. Of course, it'll have a front bumper when the time comes, but there's some R&D going on there and we'll talk more about that later. But as you're looking around, the first thing you're going to pick up on is just the framework of the doors right here. Very utilitarian, very solid looking, the exposed hinges right here. And the other thing that I noticed was just the simplicity of the push button door. To me, that really says, hey, I'm gonna function for a long time, I'm not overstated. I think a lot of y'all that have some off-road vehicles and really get into it are gonna recognize and appreciate that. The other thing that I noticed was the, uh, what I'm gonna refer to as the gutter rail here. This allows for quite a bit of mounting, I could tell, or options for mounting. We also have some sidebars here. But one of the things that struck me curious, I saw this little lightning bolt up here and I said, what are these? So I, uh, I attempted to pop one open. Oh, there we go, it's too simple. And I noticed that there is a pre-wired port slash plug. Now that goes around in four places that I've recognized so far. So why would that be important? Well, let's say that you're gonna mount some lights, some auxiliary lights. If something is already there and taken care of in the pre-wire standpoint or sense, it's gonna make life a lot easier. So they were thinking ahead. As we're drifting around to the back here, the other thing that caught my attention was the simplicity of the tail lights. I like things that are not overstated, very simple, because I could imagine creating a cage for this for protecting it. I mean, you got your reverse, your turn signal, your running lights, brake lights, all built into one. The other part that you're probably picking up right here is retriever points right here. Welded in, look pretty darn strong. And also, I want to refer to this as a skid plate, if you will. It looks like it's going to protect the muffler and some of the exhaust components. But as we step back and we're looking at how that rear tire is mounted, and you're looking at what I might refer to as a 70-30 door split. But what caught my attention was, let's assume that you've got a trailer in tow, because I'm told this thing can pull over 7,000 pounds, if, or is rated for that, and you needed to get some access to some luggage, some gear, and you're not in the position to disconnect that trailer, you don't have to open up this whole door right here, which um, if you notice would be a pretty big swing. I mean, we're talking 30, 70 right there. We're gonna get, well, you know what? Let's just talk about this rear cargo here. I'm right here. The other thing that you're gonna notice is there's plenty of tie towns. Very, very utilitarian. Um, gives you a lot of options here. The space in here is massive just for kicks. I mean, I'm gonna crawl up in here and it's, I mean, there's a lot of room in here. I, I would imagine we could put four adults in here, maybe play some cards, right? But the other thing you might pick up on is the panels have been removed. Max is working on some things, but it comes equipped with a little bit of off-road safety gear here. A um, couple of other panels that are removable in case you need to gain access. Maybe, maybe you're gonna put some molly panels on there. The other thing that I noticed is that there's a compartment here and it's either for storage or access to maybe some other electronics. It looks like they got a 12 volt port right here. So that'll make, I don't know, putting some things together back here for quick accessibility and charging, pretty simple. I also, listen for this, that close is really solid. I mean, that is, I'm almost gonna say an airtight seal. You've got a nice ladder here that's already pre-assembled, ready for you to go. Let's drift around to this side real quick. One of the things you might be also noticing is what I'll refer to these as like an L track or maybe an area where you can add some accessories. Very, very smart. We've got them here. We've got them in the door. You can put a lot of gear, very utilitarian. That's something you're not gonna have to add on. I've seen some really cool videos out of Australia where a lot of guys have some really cool tabletop mounts that they 
they include a lot of gear can be added here, your ladder, recovery boards, etc. And again, you're kind of looking at the stance here, which I thought was pretty fascinating. Check this out. This is me, okay? I can pretty much almost fit right underneath here. I mean, there is some serious ground clearance here. In the event that I needed to get underneath here and check some things out, I think that's going to be pretty simple and easy. We're going to go back underneath there in a minute because I saw some other cool stuff. But let's drift back around to the front here. And as you're coming around, again, you're going to notice that it has a very solid, it looks like a brick, so to speak. But I think that that's okay because if you're picking up one of these vehicles and you're considering what it can do and its capabilities, you're not really worried about aerodynamics. You're more interested in how it can get you in and out of some cool situations and create some lifelong memories and adventures along the way. So let's peek over here real quick since we're at it. When we open the door, there are some refinements, if you will, but very simple. First thing I notice is these beautiful seats. I'll have shelves swing around here. And those that are familiar, they're Recaro's front and rear. That's the top of the line seat right there. And you'll notice too, that we've got some curvature here that looks like it's gonna hug you. So why don't we go ahead and get on inside here and then we'll pop back outside and we'll go over a few things. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is pop the hood after that. So join me inside here. So as I'm stepping in here, one of the things that I immediately notice you might be picking up on, oh, that was a solid close right there. One of the things I immediately picked up on is simplicity here of the dash. I mean, yes, there's a lot going on, but I would say when I think about user-friendly, and I'm going to use casual word here of dumb down, there's nothing overstated. It makes sense, especially if you're out there taking some adventures, you're off-road, you need things to make sense. You're not looking to dial through screens and figure out how to multifunction something like it's your iPhone. You want to make quick adjustments. You want to have those capabilities at hand. I see that right here. It kind of reminds me of, and I'm pretty sure everybody would think this is aviation cockpit, something out of an airplane. The other thing that I noticed right away is there's not your typical instrument cluster or dash assembly here. It's actually offset. That might take a little bit of getting used to, but I think the idea behind that is, is that you're going to be focused more on the road, the terrain, and what you're doing, and not so much of a display sitting in your face. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just kind of a, how the Europeans might want to introduce things along the way. We'll see. The other thing that you pick up on, we might as well kick this on real quick. Well, let's talk about that. That was a very simple key, no push buttons. Again, keeping things simple is the key, especially when you're gonna have a rig like this and you're gonna take it and push the limits. Good sound right there. I'm told sitting on there is a twin turbo inline BMW V6, or twin turbo inline six, state that corrected, sorry about that. We're gonna pick up on that in a moment. So I'm gonna shut her down. You'll notice the in instrument cluster, I mean, it's. All the information is typically there. Miles per hour, you got some radio functions, device functions, fuel, gear. I think what's happening here when we get into the gear area, it's just to tell you if you're in park, reverse, neutral, drive, you're going through some manual shifts. And again, there are some off-road features here, some capabilities that'll be that's initiating now, altitude, temperature, pathfinder, statistics, electrical, I think we could go through a gamma of things there. As we come down here, one of the other things that I really like is, let's say you're driving down the road and you want to rotate through these settings. It's just the spin of a dial down here, you'll notice. And when you push it in, it'll allow you to switch. So we know our gearbox is about 86 degrees. Our transfer case is 59. And if I push again, I can kind of cycle through my phone and audio. So I can keep my eyes on the road. I don't have to be distracted, so to speak get used to that. I like that. also like where the uh, climate controls are set. But what was really fascinating to me is take a look up here. I feel like I'm about to join the B-52 bomber club right here and, and just somewhat just reminds me of that cockpit feeling of an aircraft as I was mentioning. I noticed along the way what they had is some external light slash switch features. The rockers which is very nice. Those are, tend to be almost foolproof and uh, they function well. I also noticed that they're 25, 25, 500 amp and 25. My guess is these, uh, let's call it these outside ones here are more for auxiliary lights and or things that you might accessorize in that way. However, this 500 amp one would tell me that as a possibility we can land a winch front or rear on here and it's all set up and probably pre-wired for that. Also, you'll notice that there's differential locks, off-road range modes, 
some driver assistance options, exterior light features, interior light features. So everything kind of makes sense here. I think what you might have to get used to, and I don't think it's going to take too long because you're going to be enjoying driving with this like crazy, is just kind of getting familiar with this function versus everything in one place. But again, I think it makes sense. The other thing that I like is the shallowness of the dash here. Typically, in a lot of vehicles, these dashes are very extended and you kind of feel like you're sitting way back. I feel like I'm kind of on top of things. I'd be able to make some decisions given the type of terrain I'm in. I also happen to pop the glove box here and notice that it is quite shallow, but to be quite frank with you, outside of some credentials and maybe some manuals, what do you really need to keep in there? But that's being stated where Michelle's sitting, she's got a grab bar there. She's got a, you know what, handle there. She's got another one up above her, which sort of leads us into that cool sunroof feature. Very safari-like, pops right up. And this is fully removable, by the way. So let's say you're out on an adventure doing some filming, you want to grab some cool content, passenger's going to be able to elevate right out of there, get some footage that's probably second to none. So if you are a content creator and you're picking up one of these, I mean, that's a slam dunk right there. You could probably throw another camera up here, just remove this, and the rest is history, which I'm not going to do just because it's not my vehicle. Maybe not yet. <laughs> so as we're sitting here, I think Michelle would agree, these seats hug you. I think, right? They just kind of lock you in. And why would that be important? My guess is if I'm off-road and I'm having some adventures and I'm throwing this thing 30, 40, 45 degrees at angles, I need to be stable in my seat, not sliding around. So I, I believe the intent, besides Ricardo being top of the line, is they wanted you to just be hugged in. Another thing that I thought was kind of cool, we're going to drift back down here, is our gear selection. We've got a little thumb lock right here that allows us to go into drive. We can go to reverse by pushing forward, and we can toggle through our manual settings. And at the push of a button, we're right back in park. So very simple. Kind of gives you that feeling that you are driving the stick shift, even though we know that we are not. So just for kicks, let's pop back out, and then we'll cover a little bit of the rear interior. I know we're kind of jumping around, but the idea is, I'm like you. Maybe I showed up somewhere and I saw something really cool like this, and I haven't done a ton of research. Caught my attention. This is probably what's going to happen. You're going to walk around it, and you're going to be... A little bit mesmerized. So let's go outside and check it out. Okay. As I step to the rear, one of the things we was talking about when I had the uh, hood popped is where's the battery, where's the fuses, etc., and what's going on there. On this 60-40 split rear, it looks pretty ideal and smart that they put the fuses here, the battery jump part. Everything looks like it makes sense. Um, it's let me move that seat belt out of the way real quick. And oh, apologize there. There we go. I also noticed when I went to climb in the rear, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with where the grab bar is, the OH handle, the oh shit handle. I think it might have been offset a little different. But the first thing I'm feeling is that I'm pretty locked in in this seat, especially if you're gonna be doing some off-road and you got some buddies with you. They probably wanna be pretty stable while you're throwing this thing around. It also looks like we got some good leg room here if you're a taller, bigger fella. Even if your knees were to come in, I'm guessing this is probably shaped or molded for that. There's also some USB ports back here, some climate control. Pretty solid. Again, feels very utilitarian, but a little bit refined. Also, you might be picking up here. We've got some monster tires here. We've got some 285-7017s. I'm guessing there's plenty room for some more. Doesn't look like we're gonna have any interference here if we increase diameter. And as I'm peeking in here, I noticed that on this shock, there is a boat sash sticker there, which means that that is actually probably a shock that's also very um, tailored to European rides. I know that Audi, BMW, and Mercedes tend to run that. So solid all the way across. I definitely want to crawl underneath here with you all and see what's going on. Let's just check out the suspension real quick. Again, we got some recovery points here. The bumper's intentionally been removed because they're doing some R&D. Um, oh, interesting, Shell. I don't know if you can pick up on this, but there's what I would refer to as part of a pan rod. Um, some sort of stabilizer as well, which tells me that they're trying to keep this front axle actually stationary and not shifting, which is super important, especially when you're off-roading and you're throwing this thing through some different articulations, if you will. So let's just crawl underneath and check out the frame on this. So I just crawled underneath here and we are facing the rear of the vehicle. And you'll notice the frame rail here. I'm gonna drift over to this side runs laterally. I believe this is what's referred to as a ladder um, frame. 
which typically means that it is one piece and can be welded and taken care of if you had an incident where you somehow broke it. I'm not sure that you could break this. It also looks like the body is mounted directly to it. As you can see here, typical drive line, um, a lot of heat shielding going on here, but what I like is how it's all tucked up. You're not gonna catch anything, which is super important. Rear disc brakes, as we see, possibly a single caliper. Again, I need to do some research on that. A rear stabilizer bar. Let's just pan around here and I appreciate your patience. Okay, we've got our cross members. Um, let's take a look towards the front at that suspension. Yep, definitely lock that front axle in so it doesn't shift and move around. Given this is a four wheel drive or a four by four, if you will, the way that it's laid out is actually very similar to an all wheel drive. And I think a lot of that has to do with the thought that there may be some city driving going on. And then if you need to lock that front and rear in, you can definitely do it. I like how the exhaust is tucked up, transmission components. There's not a lot of exposure here, which is good because you're gonna have the ground clearance you need and not be too worried about coming in contact with some stuff. I also see we have a double piston front disc brake system here. I mean, this thing's built like a beast. So I'd say I would have no problem at all taking this in any terrain, feeling comfortable. I'm kind of digging it, loving it. All right, y'all, so we just put it in uh, the shop right here, pulled on in, and I'm gonna pop the bonnet, the hood, and if you notice, it says pull two times. So it seems to me like they were thinking ahead, got a little extra safety catch in there. Most vehicles do have a, a safety catch, but a double pull I think is actually gonna add, in case you actually pulled that, to making sure this bonnet, this hood doesn't fly open. Pretty lightweight, um, locks in pretty well, looks good. So the first thing that we're looking at here is a BMW, inline turbo six here. So probably one of the more sought after motors, very uh, very recognized in the industry as being a solid platform. Um, the other thing that I'm pretty familiar with, if I'm not mistaken, and I hope that one of y'all chime in in the comments, I believe that some of the defenders early on, um, the ones that were released in Africa, actually used this particular motor. So I'd have no problem. We're talking about 282 um, horsepower, about 332 foot-pounds of torque. It's probably been tuned specifically for this. The other thing that I noticed immediately is that the engine is offset from the axle. That I think is genius, especially when you're dealing with an off-road vehicle, a four by four, with the capabilities it appears to have. You don't want that engine sitting over the axle. That's actually gonna uh, affect some of the geometry and the way the vehicle handles and moves. I also see that there's a lot of room here. Not that you're gonna play around with the serpentine belts, but let's just say you blow a hose or something. Everything's accessible. While we're talking about accessibility, all the areas that we need to check and fill our fluids, all up top. I'm actually liking how I can get to everything I need. Check top off. This I'm thinking is cool too. Another port here to do a quick jump on the battery. Oh, check this out. Uh, looks like stabilizers for the radiator, which is important, especially you're gonna be taking this vehicle off road, you're gonna be putting it to the test. You want all this stable, that is genius. Most times you don't see that, you see some little plastic arms. These are actually metal, they got rubber isolators. I'm guessing there's a lot more that we're not catching here. I'm excited to do some more research on this vehicle. Typical heat shield. My understanding it does have the ZF transmission, eight speed. The nice thing about that is that transmission is actually very recognized, works well with a lot of the engine platforms out there. It's probably, if you do your own research, it's probably the preferred transmission in many respects. So that's a, just kind of a crash course of what's going on underneath here. I'm kind of a little bit fascinated here, but I think we need to uh, move on from the video here. So is it worth it? Is there 93K worth of vehicles sitting here? 100% in my mind. I'm closing it up. Hope you all take care and uh, Maybe we'll see you on the road in this. Till next time.